You know, life was easier as a kid. Before the weight of the world was on your shoulders, I don't know about you, but my toys were fun. They didn't sit on the shelf in the package. They got played with a lot. My name's Doug, and I miss my toys. Last time we visited the world of crossbows and catapults, we looked at the centerpiece of it all, the battle set. For this episode, we're going to be looking at the accessories you could get for this awesome game, and I had them all. The first accessory we're checking out is the battering ram, released in 1983. I got mine where I got most of these sets back in the day, from KB Toys at the mall. There was a point where I found many of these on sale, most likely because they were clearing out stock. I used that as the chance to get the whole collection, and I distinctly remember buying the last one on the shelf. Let's see the battering ram. Okay, we're looking at the uh, battering ram here. Uh, it comes with two launchers and the battering ram itself. So you can see this here, uh, what it looks like there. It's pretty much all plastic. Um, there are springs inside, which I'll show you in a moment, that uh, make it move. Those are metal. Uh, my battering ram is unfortunately broken. You can see here uh, the wheels on this one side, um, the axles are broken. I kind of wish it had the metal axles going all the way through. That would have been a lot easier to fix, but the plastic pieces broke off a long time ago. There's the head of the battering ram there. Here's the launchers. There's one for each side. Okay, and this is how you set it up. The launcher just goes into the back. You can see that big spring in there. You push it, and the wheel fell off. There you go. Click it back there, and then there's another one in the front for the head. Push that, and there. Latch that together. You see how that pops out. When it hits something, the ram is supposed to pop out. Okay, let's give it a test run and see if it still works. Well, not too bad, actually. Even for a, a bum set of wheels, uh, not so bad. So I think we could still use it. I'm just gonna modify the rules a little bit to make it work. Next is the Dragon, which was released in 1983 and was one of my favorite pieces because it's very cool looking. And I was a D&D nerd at a very young age. The notion of having a dragon was exciting. It also adds special caroms to the fray. Let's check out the Dragon. Okay, this is the Dragon. This is uh, one of my favorites, as I had said. It looks really cool, and it's different than all the rest of the stuff, too. Nice bright green color. And the carams go in his mouth, so he works like a catapult. You can even uh, move his uh, arms up and down there to change the angle that you're shooting at. There we go. You pull that back, and that's how the catapult works. These are the special carams that come with it. These are the wizards. Um, it came with multiple wizards, but in the game, you're only supposed to use one for each side. So I'm not sure why they did that, but maybe because you lose it or something. Anyway, let's uh, fire one off here. Bingo, still works, still usable. Very cool toy, one of my favorites for this whole set. Now we have the Castle Outposts. This is the last accessory to be released in 1983. Pretty sure I got these on a KB clearance as well. Let's check out these Castle Outposts. All right, here's the pair of Outposts for the Vikings and Barbarians, all color coordinated as usual. Uh, you can see here the door is rigged up with a rubber band to this top piece, and uh, I'll show you how that works. And there's a catapult on the back. This other one is pretty much the same thing. Um, my catapult on the Barbarian side is unfortunately was broken uh, years ago and I super glued it back together and uh, here it still works. So hopefully it'll hold up for a while. And this is how the system works. I'm gonna use a crossbow to hit the door because it's easier than trying to hit it with a catapult. And the spring pops up and the warriors fall off the top. And uh, in the game there, that means that you've captured those warriors. And if there's no warriors left, you've captured the outpost. Up next are the battling giants. 
This was a later addition to the game, released in 1984. Let's see how these guys get added to the battle. Okay, these are the giants, uh, handsome looking fellows, especially this one. Um, here you can see the Cyclops with the uh, tonsure monk haircut. Um, let's look around the back here. He's got a button on his back. That's to uh, release his hands so he can throw stuff. And the Minotaur, he's got movable arms and everything, which don't really serve another purpose other than that he can move. And he's got a button on his butt. And that's supposed to trigger uh, him throwing the, uh, the caroms with his horns. So let's take a look at this guy first. We're gonna put a carom in between his hands there and pull it back. He's kind of squeaky, he's a little old. And we'll hold him steady, hit the button, and there he goes. Okay, now unfortunately, with uh, my Minotaur, he doesn't uh, hold back anymore. So you pull him back, but he just snaps forward because the spring, it doesn't catch in there anymore. Something broke a long time ago. It was kind of fragile to begin with. So with him, you have to kind of put the carom in, hold his body steady, and just pull it back and let it go yourself. And um, it's kind of, uh, we'll see, he doesn't really do it that far, but you know, even when he worked uh, and held it in, he never went that far anyway. So uh, definitely the Cyclops has the advantage over the Minotaur. The last accessories we're going to look at are the Trojan Horse and Battle Shield. These were also released in 1984, and I think were another KB special for me. This is a really cool looking set. Let's check it out. Okay, this set, the Trojan Horse and Battle Shield, uh, these sets look awesome. I always thought they were really cool. You can see the, uh, the details there. Um, the, this, uh, in this case, his tail is a catapult. And uh, pull it there. Spring-loaded catapult, no rubber bands. And he's got these doors here where you put little figures in, uh, just like guys would be in in a Trojan Horse. And then this button on the front um, springs those doors open and the guys fall out. And that's how you uh, foil the Trojan horse. The battle shield here, um, it has uh, this face on the front that uh, the object to foiling the battle shield is to hit that face and pop the whole thing open. It also serves as a crossbow. And you can see here on the, uh, you can see underneath here how the rubber bands go with that. And uh, you put the little guys on the inside there uh, behind the battle shield and uh, they get to hide there too. So let's try to use the battle shield to uh, foil the Trojan horse. You're supposed to slide the carom in and it's supposed to just drop down. It doesn't really do that very well, but here we go. And one guy fell out. I actually had four guys in there, but only one of them fell out. So anyway, he would be captured. Um, that's how that would work. And for the battle shield, I didn't put anybody behind it, but you can see here how it pops out like that. The whole thing just kind of pops open, which is kind of cool. The next time we look at crossbows and catapults, we'll be having the big battle between She-Ra and me. Thanks for stopping by and watching. Keep liking, sharing, and subscribing, and we'll see you the next time on I Miss My Toys. Uh, what?